Summary of the Communist Manifesto by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels wrote a political book called The Communist Manifesto. Its goal was to explain communism and get people to join its cause. The book was first released in 1848. It gives a detailed critique of capitalism, a strong defense of communism, and ideas for how to make a communist society happen. Marx and Engels say that a specter, the specter of communism, haunts Europe. People who don't understand communism or want to stop it from spreading are the ones who think of it as a scary specter, not Marx and Engels. This makes it clear that the manifesto is a reaction to people who give a false picture of communism. One of the most important ideas that Marx and Engels had was that class struggle is the main cause behind all historical change. The writers say that there have always been oppressors and those who are oppressed in every society in history. In the past, this might have happened in a more complicated way. However, capitalism simplifies class division by dividing society into the bourgeoisie, who have all the money and private property, and the proletariat, who have to work for the bourgeoisie. In a capitalist society, the means of production are owned by the bourgeoisie. This includes everything other than labor that is needed to make goods that can be sold. This includes materials, machinery, and infrastructure. The bourgeoisie pays the workers to use the means of production to make things that the bourgeoisie can sell and make money, which the bourgeoisie keeps. This gives the wealthy the chance to get more money, private property, and power over society as a whole. Because capitalism is built on competition, technological advances can give one business an edge over another. Because of this, transportation, communication, and marketing technologies have changed quickly, and the bourgeoisie has become the most powerful class. Capitalism also spread around the world because people wanted to make more money. This weakened national identities and forced countries to choose between capitalism and being left out of the economy. Capitalism also leads to a greater division of labor, which breaks up work into more simple, repetitive jobs that require less skill. Marx and Engels say that, ironically, improvements in technology and better links around the world make it possible for the proletariat to realize its potential strength as a group and, eventually, to get rid of the bourgeoisie's control over it. So, the bourgeoisie is its own gravedigger. Marx and Engels explain how communism is linked to the empowerment of the working classes, which they define as anyone who works for the capitalists and gets paid for it. They say that communism will back all working class groups that want to make things better for the proletariat. Also, it will try to bring together the workers in different countries and help them use their potential power as a group. Marx and Engels also stand up for communism when it is attacked. For instance, they say that communism is meant to get rid of private property. The writers say that private property, which includes money and land, has already been taken away from most people, the proletariat, and only really exists for the bourgeoisie. So, communism only wants to get rid of the bourgeois way of owning private property. They say the same things in response to other complaints, like the one that says communism wants to get rid of family life. Lastly, they end the part with steps for making communism work, such as a high and progressive income tax, free education, the end of child labor, and the centralization of transportation, education, and financial institutions. They want this centralization to be in the hands of the people and to help them. Marx and Engels put their thoughts about communism in context by looking at similar writing from the past. Overall, Marx and Engels don't have much good to say about these other works. They look at different types of socialism and communist writing and find fatal flaws in all of them. Reactionary socialism, they say, only wants to keep the way things have always been and doesn't see how class fight drives history. Bourgeois socialism is fake and wants to trick the proletariat into being thankful for the bourgeoisie's survival, for example, through charity and education. Critical utopian socialism and communism is a piece of writing that, while it shows how class conflict changes society, is too rough, too idealistic, and, in the end, not very useful. Marx and Engels are only interested in ideas that can be put into action and give the people more power. 
Marx and Engels say that they will work together with the European parties that are closest to the communist idea. The manifesto ends with a rallying cry for the proletariat to fight against its bourgeoisie rulers and start a revolution. The proletarians have nothing to lose but their chains. They have everything to gain. Working men of all countries, join. About the authors. Both Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels were born in what is now Germany, but was then Prussia. Their upbringings were very different. Marx's father encouraged him to study, but insisted that he study law instead of philosophy. Engels, on the other hand, was forced to join his father's business. Both men liked the works of German philosopher George Hegel when they were young. Hegel's idea that society moves forward because of clashing forces had a big impact on their political writings. Each of them found a group of people with similar ideas in the young Hegelians. This was a group of intellectuals who responded to Hegel's influence and wrote about it. Engels went to Manchester, England, in 1842 to work in the office of his father's cotton mill. This gave the young man a unique look at how the working class lived and how the capitalist system affected them. Around the same time, Marx was the editor of a German newspaper. He fought for the rights of the people and tried to move the paper's editorial line in a more radical direction. Marx and his wife, Jenny von Westphalen, left Prussia to live in France because they were afraid of being told what to say. Marx and Engels met in Paris in 1844. They became close friends and worked together. Soon after, the Prussian government put pressure on France, and Marx was forced to move to Belgium. Engels also went to Belgium. Soon after, he wrote a book called The Conditions of the Working Class in England, which was very critical of capitalism. In 1848, the Communist League asked Marx and Engels to write the Communist Manifesto, which is often called the most important political book ever written. After that, both men kept writing political works and taking part in the growing nationalist movement in Europe. Marx had to move to London, England, for good because of political pressure. Engels worked hard to pay for Marx's work, sometimes going back to work in business to make money. In 1870, Engels moved to London with Marx. In 1895, he died of cancer. Marx edited the New York Tribune and wrote Das Kapital, his best work on capitalism, in the years after the statement came out and before he died. He died in London in 1883, 15 months after his wife. He was not a citizen of any country. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.